Sounds like a funeral in here. <laughs> <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, we have our 400 meters hurdles medalists. We have in gold medal position, Karsten Warholm from Norway. You'll recognize him. He's wearing the uh, unusual headgear. Uh, our silver medalist is Yasmani Capello from uh, representing Turkey. And the bronze medalist is Caron Clement from the USA. You said it correctly. Did I? <laughs> Wonderful. No, I Finally got one right. Okay. Great. So, uh, can we have questions, please? Can we please wait for the microphone before we ask any questions? We have one here in the front row, please. Yasmani, Karsten, and Karen, first of all, congratulations on your medals. You. It looked terribly cold out there. Could each <laughs> one of you just tell us a little bit about how the conditions affected the race and how your race went? Okay, can we start with Karsten? Um, for me, this is just a good Norwegian summer, actually. So, <laughs> so there was no worries. Felt like it was an advantage, and if the sun was up, I was feeling like that was an advantage too, but uh, you just need to take it as it is. And uh, um, the times weren't that good, but um, that's mostly because of the conditions, I think, yeah. Yes, Mani? Oh. <laughs> Para mí creo que es un poco complicado. Yo vengo de un país muy cálido y le tengo mucho miedo a, a que esa temperatura, decirlo así, siempre me demoro un poco más en llegar a, a que mi cuerpo esté al máximo de caliente para hacer buenas carreras. Y respeto mucho esta temperatura. Igual he tenido que correrlo hoy un poco tácticamente porque le tengo miedo al frío. No soy... The temperature of fria. So Yasmani Copello says, for me it was a little bit uh, uh, complicated uh, because, of course, I come from a very warm country. I'm not used uh, to this kind of temperature. <laughs> My body <laughs> needs to get accustomed to it. I need to warm uh, up longer. And to say the truth, I'm really afraid of uh, the cold like this. Mm -hmm. You can come to Norway for training camp. Karan? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, for me, I just told myself, like, just pretend it is the summer, and I just um, warm up extra hard, and um, I didn't really let the, w w the w I didn't let the weather affect me. Um, I just had to ch just change my mindset coming into the finals. Okay, thank you. We have a question at the front, please. Hmm. Karsten, you had a wonderful season before uh, London. Uh, do you believe uh, you will become world champion here? Um, you know, I think everyone has to believe that you're going to do it. But uh, as for Karen and Yasmani, I felt like they're very good competitors. And I have huge respect for, for their work. And I was thinking like this was a very open race and it was all about who, who had the day and everything. So I'm not saying that I'm a better runner than them. They're like today was my day and maybe next time it's your it's it's their day. But yeah, if of course it feels good to, to take it today, of course, yeah. Another question at the front here. Thank you. Karsten, you're relatively new to the four hundred hurdles. So how did your coach talk you into doing it? <laughs> um, it wasn't that hard for him, I think. Uh, we, are, uh, we are cooperating very good. We, we are at the same fr frequency. Uh, we have bad humor, both of us, and um, we work very good together. So we, we discussed it and felt like it was worth giving it a shot. And this winter, we worked very hard for it. And he's a pure genius when it comes to running. So we are just calling him Dr. Sprint. He's a great guy. <laughs> yes, in the second row here, please. Uh, Karan, you've talked about finding some motivation in some different places this year. I mean, nobody likes to kind of settle for that, and you've talked about making history quite a bit, but is this maybe something that you needed going ahead to 2019 and 2020? I will say it's definitely motivation for me. Um, of course, bronze medal is good, but it's not gold. But um, I'll continue to work hard and um, just keep pressing um, for the future. You know, um, 
I think I have more legs beneath me. You know, um, 31 is not old for the Florence hurdles. I, th I think as you get older in the hurdles, um, the better you get. It's like fine wine, you know, so um, I'm excited for my future. Um, third row there, gentlemen. Uh, Carson, you followed a very aggressive uh, strategy in the semifinals. You went out very hard. Was there any, uh, did you have any doubts about doing it again uh, in the final, especially given that the track was wet? Uh, um, no. Um, I think, like, I, I just have one way to do it, and I did it in the CMIS, and, and I did it today. Um, I'm, you know, I'm young, I'm stupid, so going hard <laughs> out, it works for me. So I did it again. Obviously, you won the race, but how would you assess it from a technical standpoint? How do you feel about the, how the race uh, played out? It's hard to say. As, as I said, uh, the times were not that good. Um, I felt like it, it, it was going faster, but of course, the conditions was, uh, was challenging today. So, yeah, I'm happy that I took the goal. That's, that's, that's all that means something right now. Okay, so question here, please. Yes, Monty. It was very crowded over the last couple of hurdles. What were you telling yourself, and did you know where you were? Did you know you were moving up through the crowd? Entendiste la pregunta. Dice que en las últimas vallas había mucha gente, todos más o menos al mismo nivel. Si tú te ya te te dabas cuenta de dónde estabas respecto a los otros competidores. <coughs> sí, uh, no sé si es que tengo esa forma de correr, pero siempre intento llegar al final porque unido con... Pero ya tenía presente que tenía buenos corredores por debajo de mí, incluso más rápidos que yo. Y al llegar muy lejos en la, en la recta final no tenía posibilidad de, de alcanzarlo. Pero bueno, hemos llegado un poco más parejos y al cerrar un poco fuerte... Tuvo la oportunidad de, de alcanzar ahí una buena oportunidad de llegar al segundo. You know, it's a little uh, uh, difficult for me. I know that uh, uh, there were stronger athletes than me, athletes who had faster times. But I knew that, uh, as you say, there were quite a lot of us more or less on the same uh, on the same uh, uh, line. And if I really pushed hard, I knew that I could do it. And I'm, you know, quite happy with my second place. Other other questions? Yeah, one at the front. <laughs> you hate asking questions, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, Karsten, what will you see you do the rest of the season? Will you do any other 400 hurdle races? Will you do the straight 400? Um, or is it too early to ask yet? I'm going to do the straight 400s at the Nationals. Uh, it's my last event. Uh, it's, I know it's my last competition for the season. And also, I'm going to meet these guys again in Zurich. Um, so I think they they want revenge. And again, again. <laughs> so it's gonna be fun. Mad respect for them. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? One more there. Okay. Go ahead, Barbara. <coughs> Caron, at the end of the season, some of your best play, your best position in races over the last couple of hurdles because you really time your things well. Tell us what happened tonight. Well, <clears throat> um, it was pretty much the last hurdle. I used my non-dominant leg off the last hurdle, um, and that really cost me the race because um, I was thinking about, thinking, thinking about my semifinal run, and um, I, I used my dominant leg to come off the last hurdle and to have that surge, and tonight I didn't have that. 